infinite number of spaces where the carried arrow idea gets messed around with and the arrows get turned around even though they were locally stepped along in the normal sense of the word straight. Let's start by taking a closer look at Euclid's second axiom. Any straight line segment can be extended indefinitely in a straight line. The sense is that we have some direction to that line and we want to take little steps in that same direction. So, we can have an arrow that leads us down the line. This arrow is being moved with a process that we'll call parallel transport. Parallel transport really means moving a vector along a geodesic tangent to the space such that it remains pointing in the same direction as you move it in tiny incremental steps. For a flat space, this is a nearly trivial and obvious exercise. We can also parallel transport an arrow along a different geodesic that intersects the original geodesic. In both cases, we always mean to say that a geodesic is a straight line in that space. Again, in a flat space, this always means the trivially considered straight line. Notice in the second case that the arrow was parallel transported along the second segment but maintained its orientation. That's the essence of parallel transport. We can then define the curvature of a space to be the amount of deviation, if any, that a parallel transported arrow endures as it is transported around a closed loop. In a flat space, the arrow will always stay pointed in the same direction, never leaving its orientation. This is exactly the same as pushing the arrow around on a table and always keeping it pointed in the same direction. But in a curved space, the orientation of the arrow will change upon traversing a closed loop. The direction and amount of rotation determines the shape of the curved space at that point in the space. Here, we still haven't limited spaces to anything. A space could be flat here, radically curved there, and only mildly curved somewhere else. But a curved space will always change the orientation of an arrow as it is parallel transported around a loop. So let's take a good first example of such a space. The surface of a sphere is a two-dimensional space. At every point on the sphere, there are an infinite number of tangent arrows that are in the space. Let's choose one such arrow and take it to be pointing towards smaller longitude. Now let's step that arrow along a geodesic, here the equator of the sphere, always keeping the orientation of the arrow as close to parallel as you can as you step it. Now you might be saying, a sphere has a curved surface, so if you move the arrow at all, it'll have to rotate. And that's exactly true. So, we have to move the arrow in such small steps that we cannot sense this change. However, even if we do this, the changes will add up. We turn the arrow now to go longitude line up to the North Pole. This is a bit easier to get since the curvature isn't in the direction of the arrow. Once we get to the North Pole, we descend back down the longitude line leading to our original starting place. When we arrive back home, the arrow has been rotated. Each step of the way, we took pains to assure that the arrow was always carried parallel transport style along the geodesic in a straight line on the surface of the sphere and remaining pointing in the same direction. Obviously, the surface of a sphere is curved. It's always interesting to do parallel transport for the flight path of a plane. Taking this very long flight from LAX to Heathrow is done on the geodesic, great circle line in red, and certainly not the black line. However, just for fun, take a black arrow and point it in the Mercator projection from LAX to Heathrow. The angle between the Mercator straight line and the true great circle straight line is 49 degrees. Notice how the black arrow, when transported between two points on a straight line in the two-dimensional, spherically curved space, will rotate quite a bit. The black arrow is basically the viewpoint of someone looking out a window, and the pink arrow is the true direction of the plane. If we were to have instead forced the transport to occur along the blue line, which appears straight, but is actually the curved line, the same rotation would occur. And this is because instead of one big path, as we see here, there would be ever tinier small hops from point to point. Each smaller hop would be closer and closer to a Euclidean straight line. However, because the Earth's surface is curved, these little hops along the truly shortest distances will still add up to the same total rotation as before. 